Okay, so now it's time to actually make this do something. And we're actually gonna be doing a bit of a fix up at the same time as calling this process. But ultimately we're gonna be calling process turn. But the reason why I wanna do a refactor is because this check board is starting to get used not to actually check the board, but rather actually perform actions. And we run into a very weird logic use case where we're constantly calling check board, but we're telling it not to actually take action. So I wanna separate this concept out. And I think that's very important because the only other way I could think of that I could write this was to add an extra bool to it and then have it also count to take moves away. And it just doesn't work. It, it feels very unclean. And by doing this, it also allows us to have a nice little delay added so that we can wait for check board before we then take another action. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to be trying to separate this logic of take action out of it and just have checkboard return whether we have matches or not. So all this logic stays the same here, but by the time we get to this take action, we don't wanna be doing it here. We wanna actually know whether we're going to try and take action based on the result of our has matched. That was how it was originally intended. I got a little bit sidetracked, but refactors happen all the time. It's very normal. So before we start taking things out of this method, I think it's a good idea to understand the process flow. And that process flow starts with select potion. So inside of select potion, we basically, this is us clicking and choosing the potion. So if nothing's selected, we select the potion. If we select a potion that is this potion, we unselect our potion. And if we select a different potion with a selected potion, we perform this swap potion. Swap potion then just says, hey, is it adjacent? If it isn't, don't do it. Um, if it is, then do our swap. So that's actually moving the potions from one location to another. We set is processing move to true, and then we start this coroutine of processing matches. So processing matches waits for 0.2 seconds. It then checks and takes action to remove potions and refill the board. At the same time, it returns this bull, and then if we don't have a match, we swap things back. So this is kind of a messy concept. Instead, what we're going to have is a different type of if else. So we're gonna say if, check board. So do we have matches? If we do, then what we want to do is start a coroutine that is going to process our matches in our turn. And if we don't have a match, we can then call our else statement. And now our else statement would just swap our potions back to their original location. Now check board here obviously currently expects us to return a action taken. Um, so we're going to be removing that from our method and doing a bit of a fix up. So let's get rid of this now. I will leave this in here. It's gonna cause an error for now, but we'll move it out when we get to it. So back down to here, we should now have our proper logic that just says, if we have matches, start a coroutine to do this swap, else swap it back to the way it was. Now we'll also have a few places up in here, for example, where we had this checkboard returning with a true false. Then we've also got the checkboards inside of this logic here, which we're gonna move out now. So I'm gonna create a public I enumerator that is gonna be called process turn on matched board. So this only gets called when you have a matched board currently. And then we're gonna add in our subtract moves. So we don't necessarily always wanna subtract moves here, but sometimes we will. Now, the reason why we have this here is because it doesn't yield return anything but we're gonna move some of the logic in. So we're gonna take this for each loop, which is setting everything to false, as well as this remove and refill potions. I'm gonna cut it and paste it into here. Now potions to remove itself was only a local thing inside of our method. We were creating it inside of checkboard, but we don't need to create it inside of checkboard. We can have it as a field up the very top. And we can call this a serialized field and call it a list of potions to remove. And now that we've added it in here, we have to just make sure that when we call checkboard, that we are just making sure we clear it out because we still wanna start with no potions. So I'm gonna say potions to remove dot clear. And we're still, it effectively gives us the same thing. Rather than creating it locally though now, we can access it anywhere else. So we no longer get an error on potions to remove inside of here. And now that also allows us to call game manager dot instance dot process turn. So this is obviously the method we wrote in our game manager just before. I'm gonna take potions to remove dot count. Now this is the points that I'm adding. You could come up with a slightly more complicated point system, but right now it's just gonna be one potion equals one point and the number of potions you remove in a turn, the total potions we're gonna remove becomes the points that you're gonna earn. 
and then I'm going to pass into that the subtract moves that we are passing into this method. So we're running through, we're setting all our potions to is match to false, and then we're removing all our potions off the board. We're then going to process our turn, and then we're going to wait for 0.4 seconds. So we're going to say yield return new wait for seconds, 0.4f. And the reason why we're going to do this here is because we don't want it to automatically work out every single match before it displays on the board. We want to see the potions fall down. We then want to have a little bit of a wait and we go, oh, it's another match. And then within that time, it takes you to recognize it. It's about 0.4 seconds. You'll see it and then it will make another match and then slide down again. So we want that process to keep happening. So now we have our check board again. So we're going to say if check board. So in this scenario, I've removed all my potions, I've done my match, and I get down to here, I've waited 0.4 seconds, and now I'm gonna check my board again and see if we have duplicate matches. This is why this subtract moves is extremely important because we don't wanna be calling it on these subsequent runs because what's gonna happen is I click the potion, I move it somewhere else, it makes its first match, and then these multiple matches keep happening. So we'll say start coroutine, and it's just gonna kick off this existing coroutine. So we'll say process turn on match board, and we're going to pass false into this one because we don't want to rematch. That's looking good. We've still got a few errors. This can all disappear, so we don't need to worry about anything about take action anymore. This is nice and clean now as well. All it does is check the board for existing matches, doesn't do anything else anymore. And we have all of that logic separated. So this used to be this one weird method that was all combined. Now it's separated. And there's one other spot that we need to actually call this method, and that is going to be down when we were doing our swap potion. We had this here. So we'll have to say start coroutine. We'll paste in that, and then we'll call true this time, because this is the time that you've actually taken a move. Now refactoring is obviously always a little bit of jumping around. So let's just go back to select potion and understand the process flow this time. So I click my mouse button down and I call select potion. Select potion, we have all this logic hasn't changed. We get to swap potion when we've clicked a potion that's not our current potion. Inside a swap potion, make sure they're adjacent. Then we do our swap. Then we start our coroutine to process our matches. So inside of process our matches, we check our board. If we have a match, we start the coroutine to do this. If we don't have a match, just swap them back, that's fine. But in this case here, we do have a match. So we're gonna call this new coroutine that is going to Uncheck everything, remove the potions, process our turn at our points, tell us if we win or lose potentially, then wait for 0.4 seconds, then check the board again, and then do the process again until it eventually we have no more matches. So I'm going to save everything that we have here and we're going to hit play. And now what we should see if we make a match, everything should work as it did before, but now we should actually start gaining points. Our moves should subtract, and if we hit the goal of 30, it should bring up that victory screen. So I'm going to start making some matches. And you can see here, it does that matches. It waits that 0.4 seconds and then does the subsequent matches as well. And we're on 29 points, so we make this. We have to do a little bit of a <laughs> fixing up of our UI there because it shouldn't be in front of it, but we're going to fix that up right now, actually. But everything else works. We've got our victory screen here. That looks good. Yeah, okay, so it's just fixing up that last part. You can see here I've got 32 points. I got more points than my goal, and I still have four moves left. So we're looking great. And I think the easiest way to do this might actually just be to take this parent potion game object that's already stored as a reference in our potion board and just set it inactive. So when we win, the potions disappear off the board. You don't have to see them anymore. You could play with layering if you wanted to. That's fine as well. You can still have the potions in the background. That, that's nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, this is just... Nice and clean. So inside of our potion board, it's the potion parent game object that we're looking at here. So I'm just gonna go down to my method where we win and lose. And I'm just gonna say potion board dot instance dot potion parent. And we're going to set active to false. And then we'll do the same on this side here. There's also one last thing as well, just to avoid errors when you actually win the game, we're gonna utilize inside of check board a if game manager dot instance dot is game ended and if the game is ended we're just going to return false on our checkboard and that will just stop us making any future matches so we don't have the case where it just keeps looping because we've inactivated those parent potions we obviously don't want to then have them trying to be used because they're no longer going to be active objects which is then going to cause them to error so let's just make sure we're error free 
And you can see here, our potion board goes to victory. Congratulations, you have won X moves and X points. We can fix that up at the start of the next tutorial, that's fine. And we have no errors in our code, that's great. Everything is finished and we've won our game. And now if I were to click this back menu, because inside of our build settings here, the only scene we have is this sample scene, which is build index zero, it's gonna take us back to the exact same game. So we just start again. So that allows us to start again. The one thing I want to test here is what happens when I only have one move and I have a goal of 30 points. I want to see my loss screen as well. So just for completeness sake, you lose. Unfortunately, you've only got X points in X moves. Better luck next time. Here we go. And back to the game. I'll set that back to 10 so we're able to play it next round. And that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next tutorial. As always, these videos wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. In the diamond tier, we have Infinite Canvas. In the emerald tier, we have Demand Games. In the gold tier, we have Castle Coders, Zope, and Maths Math. In the silver tier, we have Sunday Roast, Jim Hawkins with Halloumi, and Hickey92. Thank you all. If you'd like to sign up, the link is down the bottom right there. It's patreon.com slash and I will see you guys in the next video.